Welcome to the Addiction Connection Podcast, connecting the hope of the gospel with the heart of addiction. I'm your host, Mark Shaw, and today's topic is unbelief. And this is a kind of a new revelation to me. I mean, I say new. I'm gaining in a greater understanding of this. So I shouldn't say it's brand new, like, oh, I discovered you know, a pot of gold at the end of a, a rainbow or something like that. But this is something I've known about for a long time and would articulate differently in my early days of study on this. But today, I'm learning more and more and thinking differently about it than I ever have. And I really think this is an essential key element to addiction is unbelief. And I hope I can explain that well to you now in this podcast. I want to start with Hebrews 3, verses 12 and 13, which say this, Take care, brothers, lest there be in any of you an evil, unbelieving heart. There's our word, unbelief, unbelieving leading you to fall away from the living God. So let me read that verse again, verse 12. Take care, brothers. So who's it talking to? It's talking to Christians. Lest there be in any of you, Christians, an evil, unbelieving heart, leading you to fall away from the living God. But exhort one another every day, as long as it's called today, that none of you may be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. So I've, I've probably covered this in a podcast before. I know I teach on this a lot. These are a couple of my favorite verses because I think people today tend to think, okay, a drug addict is an unbeliever. A non-drug addict is a believer or, you know, or <laughs> uh, not every non-drug addict is a believer, but you understand what I'm saying. If you use drugs you've got to be an unbeliever. I mean, that's what a lot of people think. And I just think that's erroneous because verse 12 is telling us that you brothers, you believers, you sisters in Christ, if you let a seed of unbelief, of doubt into your heart, just a seed, I'm not talking about a big seed, I'm talking about a mustard seed, right? We've talked about the mustard seed of faith before, with Christ talking about if you have faith like a mustard seed, you can tell this mountain to, to move and it'll move and so forth. And in that really, the context of that is talking about forgiveness, not talking about doing miracles. Uh, a lot of the modern day false teachers use that to say, look, you could do miracles if you just believe. You just need to have the faith of a mustard seed. So you must not have faith. You must not believe. So therefore, you are not getting your miracle today, and, and they really make people feel awful about their Christian walk, and that's so hor- horrific, uh, such a bad teaching, uh, and I that's not what I'm saying at all, because that mustard seed teaching is really about uh, forgiveness and, and trusting God. Uh, it's hard to forgive people. It's hard to repent. Much You know, it takes really the Holy Spirit to bring you to a place of repentance. But repentance is hard and forgiveness, I think, is even harder because we've been hurt. But anyway, this mustard seed of unbelief, this little bit of doubt in our hearts, it's evil. I mean, in Hebrews 3, the writer is not saying that unbelief is okay or it's, you know, it's just, you know, a little problem. It's saying it's evil, it's wicked, it's wrong. And so if you have unbelief in your heart, what does that what does that lead you to do as a believer? It leads you to fall away from the living God. So if you fall away, you are not walking with God. You are tripping and falling and going the opposite direction of God. And you're not in a living, vibrant relationship with God. You are falling away. You are... Uh, walking away, you are leaving the God who saved you and whom you love. And I think about the crazy times we're in uh, right now and how we can all be so easily distracted by social media, by lies, by 
all of the shenanigans that are going on in our culture, and we can take our eyes off of the gospel, off of the one true God, and off of the message of the gospel, which is a message of hope for sinners. Everyone's looking for drugs and things to fix their heart, their problems, their depression, their anxieties. Uh, I did a podcast on ketamine, and people are looking for drugs to fix what ail them. But really what's in our hearts and, and what needs to be fixed is unbelief. It's not believing God. It's not trusting God. It's doubting God. And really, in the opposite end of that, it's trusting ourselves. It's trusting ourselves. You think about what the Bible warns about in Proverbs 3, verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not lean on your own understanding. So the Bible never teaches you to trust yourself. It says doubt yourself. Don't lean on what you understand or what you think is right. You have to believe God and trust in him. Even when you can't see him, even when the circumstances are hard, you have to trust in him. And that uh, passage in Proverbs 3, verse 6 says, carrying on from verse 5, in all your ways acknowledge him and he will make straight your paths. Be not wise in your own eyes. There it is again. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. It will be healing to your flesh and refreshment to your bones. So when we're wise in our own eyes, when we lean on our own understanding, I believe in those moments we are doubting God. And we have this evil, unbelieving heart leading us to fall away from the living God. I don't believe Christians can fall away from God. And, you know, I believe in the perseverance of the saints and that once you're saved, you're, you're, you're saved from then on that you can make sinful choices for sure and you can die from those. I mean, a Christian who makes a sinful choice to use heroin and mixes it with fentanyl and the fentanyl and the heroin are mixed and they overdose and die, well, that's a sinful choice birthed from a, a heart of unbelief and doubt that has made a fatal choice. They're, they're dead, but I don't believe they're going to go to hell. And this is may rock your world, but I believe they're in heaven. And I've known people who have relapsed, who have gone back to their sin or their drug of choice, and they've died and I'm convinced because of the profession of their faith, because of their desire to be publicly baptized and publicly to profess the faith that they had in Jesus Christ, that they were truly regenerated and born again, even though they made a choice that was sinful and that led to death, that doesn't mean they're in hell. And so there are people that I've seen get saved, get delivered from drugs and alcohol, as people will say, but then go back to it and die, and I believe they're still going to heaven. And now that's maybe a little controversial, and you may not agree with me, and we can still be friends uh, if you disagree with that, but I think that's a biblical way to think about this. And so the message that we are all about in the Addiction Connection is not a message of just get people clean and sober. I mean, that's great. We want people clean and sober. There's no doubt about it. But the bigger message is we want them to know the truth of the gospel because we want them to know the truth of Jesus Christ and who he is so that they can make him Lord and Savior of their lives and recognize him as such and not fall away from the living God. But because of this old nature, this flesh, this old man that's in us, someone who goes back to their old ways, their old flesh, their sinful ways of shooting heroin and mixing it with fentanyl could overdose and die. I mean, that's the reality of it for them. Whereas someone whose old sin is to go back to stealing might, you know, go back to stealing a little bit here and there and not have the same kind of devastating life ending consequences as drug addiction. So as I think about unbelief, I really think that is a key problem in the heart of the addicted that they are running around using drugs. They are doubting God. They're not believing God. They're not trusting in God. Instead, they're trusting in themselves. 
they are operating as though they are God, and I say that with a little g, G-O-D. They are operating in that way in a life of unbelief. And so our message and the power of our type of counsel and the addiction connection is one of belief. We're sharing the hope of the gospel because we want people to believe, not to believe in us or our message even. We want them to believe in Jesus, to develop a relationship with him so that they know him and trust him and, and uh, live in a way that exudes that. You know, with the coronavirus and the, the fear around that, I've been so impressed with the people who are like, okay, I'm going to social distance, I'm going to wear a mask, but I'm going to go to my hospital and do my job and work uh, trusting in God that even if I get this virus, and at the time of these recordings, a lot of people thought the virus would kill you, uh, but these were bold people who went in and trusted God, Christian friends that I know who served God and did so in hospital settings or in other settings. I mean, that were essential service type settings. And so their boldness for Christ was something that they they believed in God and their behavior showed it. It exuded a belief, a trust in God. And that's what God is really calling us to do. And so the drug-addicted person is running around in unbelief. They're not trusting in God. They're trusting in themselves. They're doubting God and his promises. They doubt that he wants good for them. They're doubting that he's wise. Uh, They're doubting that he is sovereign and in charge of all things. They're living as though they are God. And then verse 13 of Hebrews 3 says, but exhort one another every day, as long as it's called today, that none of you, he's talking to Christians, may be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. That's what's so scary to me. Sin left unchecked. Sin left unrepented for only deceives us. It's deceitful. It tricks us into thinking we're okay when we're not. And we're not talking about salvation here. We're talking about you're not in a right standing with God. You're actually falling away from the living God and you don't even know it. And so you're deceived. You have a wrong outlook in in this manner and your heart can become hardened. It can become hardened by deceitfulness, by the trickery of sin. And that sin resides in your own heart, in your own mind, in your own thoughts, in the way you live your life. And so we need exhortation. We need that from other people every day. We need community. You see that in verse 13. The Bible's saying, you exhort one another every day. So I don't just need church on Sunday. I need to read the Bible every day. I need to be talking to Christians every single day. And you do too, especially if you've been addicted to some substance. You know, that 90 meetings in 90 days that the self-help groups promote, that's awesome. I mean, I wish that it were 90 church meetings in in 90 days uh, rather than secular meetings, but that idea of 90 meetings in 90 days, that's a great idea. 90 church meetings, 90 small group meetings, 90 one-on-one meetings, 90, you know, whatever it is, worship service, listening to sermons, talking to another Christian, but you need somebody to exhort you every day. And so if you've lived an addicted lifestyle and now you're trying to live a transformation, transformational lifestyle, then uh, you need to find somebody to help you, to talk to you every day, because it can be lonely and you can get lost in your own thoughts. You can be deceived by your own sin in your own heart and it can harden you. You know, that hardening is a scary, scary state when you think about being a Christian and becoming hardened in our hearts because of the deceitfulness of sin. I mean, that is horrible. And so as long as it's called today, we need to exhort one another every single day. So I would encourage you, find somebody to exhort you. I think that's the number one danger of this social distancing and um, time we're living in where We're just isolating. Everyone's living in their own place. And yeah, we've got social media and telephones and and games and things to, you know, distract our minds. Sports are coming back on in a lot of countries. And so people are distracted by that. 
But what we really need is exhortation every single day, as long as it's called today, that none of us become hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. That's what God says, because this evil, unbelieving seed of doubt in our hearts can lead us to fall away from the living God. And I think that's the number one issue for those who are struggling with drug addiction and and tempted to go back to relapse. It's because of unbelief. This whole issue of not believing God, doubting God, but the opposite of that I think is true, believing in self, trusting in self and doing what you want as though you're the king or you're the little G God and you're in charge of your life. Don't fall for that one bit. Get people in your life who exhort you, who tell you the truth, the hard truth that you need to hear that might hurt your feelings a little bit, but it's meant to be done in love as a confrontation that that is genuinely meant to love you, not to hurt you, but to help you to see that the way you're thinking right now is deceptive. You've deceived yourself and you need somebody outside of you usually to point that out. That's why I love biblical counseling. I love disciple making. I love small group counseling and disciple making. We have care groups We have community groups in our church at Grace Fellowship Church, which I love those. And then we have the the larger gathering of worship services in a a big group, which are, are just so encouraging, such encouraging times. But you know what? We need that every single day. So if you're someone who struggled with drug addiction, I pray you are building in relationships with people and with God. And maybe every day it's not possible to talk to someone. I I get that. People are busy today, but you can always talk to God. You can spend time in his word and in prayer, and you can always spend time there. And so every single day you need to be doing this. And uh, that's really what was on my heart today for this particular podcast is about unbelief. I could say more about it, uh, but I you know, for the sake of time in your ears, I will wrap it up with this. Uh, God loves you. God wants good for you. And he knows you're weak. We're not, I read something the other day. It said, we want strong women. We want strong men. And I thought, no, we don't. That That's the wrong thing to say to our kids is I want you to be strong. You know what I want my kids is to see? I, I want you to know that you're weak, that you need Christ. You're weak. And and, uh, I mean, not as a put down, but as a a reality check. Don't try to do it in your own strength. Get people to help you. Get them to exhort you. That's what verse 13 is saying in Hebrews 3. And so I've got to encourage you to do that. Don't think that you've got to be Superman or Wonder Woman and, and beat this thing on your own. You need help and you need people around. You need the community of a local church helping you encouraging you, but confronting you when you need that, exhorting you every single day, as long as it's called the day, that you're not hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. Well, thank you for joining me on this podcast on the topic of unbelief. This has just been a a, a stirring in my heart, and I wanted to share it with you. Uh, I pray that you'll dig in your word and research in your Bible to find out more about what God says about belief and unbelief. Thanks for joining me on the podcast. Tune in next time on the Addiction Connection podcast, where we connect the hope of the gospel with the heart of addiction.